is this the last generation of graphics cards? Well, maybe that's a little harsh. Is this the last of the current GPU technology that we will get? What's up? So I was planning out on making a video like this. I was like, well, the size of the GPU die could be an obvious limiting factor because if the chip itself is too big, first, it's gonna cost more and more to produce that. And second, it's gonna need a bigger and bigger board to support it. So I was looking at this and I was like, well, the 49, you know, the, the biggest, it's the biggest bird, dude. And it has a large chip. And it has a die area of 608 millimeters squared. So I was like, okay, I. I don't really know how big that is. So let's go check out the 3090 from last generation, basically the 4090's counterpart. You can see here that it has a 628 millimeter square die. And I was like, the 3090 was bigger than the 4090. And I pulled up the 2080 Ti. If you're buying a high-end GPU during the 20 series, which all these cards were pretty bad value, 754 millimeter squared. It's even bigger. So the 4090 is actually small. In comparison, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's still a big die. Like if we compare it to a 3070, which is a much lower end skew, has a die area of 392. So then I also thought power draw was a problem. If you're talking about the GPU technology right now, it seems like they have to keep pushing power targets in order to keep getting performance out of it. And you know, chips get less and less efficient the more power you put into them. Despite everybody like hyping up about power draw is bad in these generations, you have to consider what parts are talking about. When they talk about the 4090 drawing 450 watts, I'm kind of okay with that. And like it's like, it makes me, it, if I had a 4090 and if I was wasting that power, it'd make me feel kind of disgusting. That, that's my personal opinion. The Halo product is a product that they're just trying to push the absolute limits on and just seeing what all performance they can get out of it. But if you're talking about the average card, let's look at the 1070, which came out in 2016. 150 watts and i i think back then this was a very efficient card and we see the 2070 which succeeded it in 2018 only drew 175 watts i mean i know tdp isn't exactly a representation of how much power a card draws but it it does give you a pretty ballpark answer and my 1070 was very close to that 150 watts let's move on to the next generation the 3070 which came out in 2020 and the 3070 drew 220 watts. Yes, it's more, but it's really not that bad. I mean, they're still recommending that 550 watt PSU are really gonna be out of the range of most people where you have to upgrade your power supply and your case and everything just to cool this thing and power it. I thought we were pushing these chips so far that we that we realistically couldn't keep working with the same technology that much longer without a major change. That's where it really dawned on me. The generation on generation price to performance is not that good right now. That's what people are angry about. And that's where I don't know if this way of manufacturing and selling pricing GPUs is sustainable for the long-term future. So heads up, you're gonna need to take this with a slight grain of salt. The RTX 4070 hasn't released yet and there's rumors that it might release in April. We're not 100% sure of that, but some leaked performance specs have come out. Whether or not they're true, we don't know. Things might change in this short time. Daniel Owen did a great video about this where he tried to calculate the rough theoretical performance of the 4070 way before it's gonna even launch. Um, and I'm gonna run this number again, just really quick to see if this is correct. So what he ran off of in his video was that the 4070 and the 4070 Ti are based on the same chip, which is the 80104. The 4070 Ti has 7,680 CUDA cores and the 4070 has 5,888 5, CUDA cores. With that information, we can run a rough calculation that a 4070 might be about 77% the performance of a 4070 Ti. Now, I would expect it to run a little bit faster than this, but that is my opinion. So going on Tech Power Up's website, and they have a 4070 Ti here. You can see here, if you're talking about 77%, and if you give it a grain of salt, it might be about the same performance of a 6800 XT. Doesn't look that good for it. <laughs> Based on the pricing of a 4070 Ti, the 4070, might cost in the realm of six to seven hundred dollars and the 6800 xt is going for about 580 dollars right now if the 4070 is anywhere in the realm of 600 to 700 dollars then that's where we're going to have a problem especially because the 4070 the 70 class of gpus from nvidia are typically that that class of gpu that a decent amount of people can afford and they offer really nice balance of price to performance some people are going to argue well 
well, you get frame generation with the 4070 and you're gonna get AV1 support. AV1, uh, I'll give you that one. The 6800 XT might have worse ray tracing too, which I would expect it would. It's gonna get FSR 3.0 pretty soon. SR 3.0 is going to be AMD's version of frame generation. These uh, performance metrics are according to tech power up. The 2070 was 37% pass faster and it costed 32% more. So as uh, a lot of people know, the 20, se 20 series compared to the 10 series was really bad value. So realistically, the better jump was when it went from the 2070 to the 3070 and it was 50% faster and it was the same price. And the 3070 was amazing value compared to the 2070, but no one could really ever buy it at MSRP, so it really didn't matter. And that GPU shortage has kind of set, up, set the stage for this current generation of graphics cards that people are almost normalized to even be able to get a graphics card at MSRP. From the 3070 to the 4070, the 4070 might perform about 35% faster and cost 20 to 40% more. Not that much improvement generation on generation. The reason that we're looking at the 70 class of cards is, is again because the 70 class is some of the best bang for the buck in every generation. AMD also so far has not provided much value generation on generation with their 7900 XT and their 7900 XTX. Now for some reason the 7900 XT and the 4070 Ti from Nvidia are priced about the same and they trade blows in a lot of cases. So much so that it prompted Hardware Unboxed to make a follow up video comparing these two cards. And in the end, he said, I don't really recommend either of them. If you have to buy one, 7900 XT is slightly better value now, but it's 50 bucks. Frankly, at around $800 to $850 US, I'm none too impressed with either of these products. With $100 now knocked off the price, I think I'd go with the 7900 XT, as I do expect that extra VRAM capacity to come in handy down the track. And with no other real drawbacks, it seems as though it is the better option to me. But this all leads into why in the heck are things just keep getting more and more expensive? One of the main reasons is because TSMC, which is the chip manufacturer, which works with a lot of these graphics card companies, their prices as their manufacturing process keeps getting more and more precise. I don't really know how to describe how fine that five nanometer or seven nanometer is. But I think people very often say, if you look at 28 nanometer, it was like one thousandth of a, the diameter of a human hair. Next generation, it seems like, is going to be three nanometer process and their cost just keeps going up. It should be $20,000 a wafer, I think. I don't know too much about the in-depth manufacturing, but it's getting more and more expensive. You can see here this graph kind of representing what this looks like over time. So yeah, the chips cost more and they keep packing more and more features into these cards. Like ray tracing wasn't a thing a few years ago and they have to take the cost of tensor cores and RT accelerators into account. Not to mention they're adding more and more VRAM with every card. That stuff, I'm not, I don't know 100% for sure, but I don't think it's getting cheaper to add VRAM and adding cores to your, your cards. Correct me if I'm wrong though, I'm coolers. Have you seen how big cards are now? Okay, okay. <laughs> like what? Like here, pick this. Look at this. This is not a small GPU. No. The, the 3080 that I have is a, you know, like a decently priced card, it, it, like it's on the high end. But that card is huge. Only a few years ago, that was kind of an anomaly that like, oh, you had a triple slot card. That's huge. First, the research and development time of making that cooler, making it perform as optimally as possible is a thing. And then the materials and manufacturing costs of making these coolers that goes into it, especially that trickles down which it doesn't seem like it's that much of an issue, but if lower end cards draw more power, they have to have bigger and bigger coolers. And we do see since the 1070 at least, it isn't that much more, but the 4070 and even the 3070 drew 220 watts and 200 watts. Yeah, you do need a bigger cooler for that and that does make the card physically cost more money. It's just more materials, more manufacturing, more research and development. And then, I mean, people want RGB on their cards. People want cool looking fans, you know, all the branding and stuff. But this doesn't even bring up the fact that it doesn't feel like these companies have as much confidence in their product as they once 
did. You're like, you're like, what, what the heck are you talking about? Well, in these recent generations, Nvidia especially, and AMD has been following suit, has been really hard focused on AI accelerated features. It's talking about like DLSS and uh, in this recent generation, frame generation. As these things enhance the performance of graphics cards without actually making them physically faster. It's a weird concept, but it's almost like a fake it till you make it kind of thing. And overall, this helps the consumer because it breathes new life into older cards, especially with FSR. AMD followed up ray tracing in the next generation, but Nvidia really invested hard into ray tracing, like it's going to be a very standard feature very quickly into the market. Little do they know that three generations in, and it's only just becoming kind of usable by the mainstream audience. So you have to use DLSS to make it playable. This doesn't make me feel like Nvidia and AMD have confidence in their performance over time that they can keep pushing this technology if they're pushing AI so hard. Especially the average person that just like turns on frame generation, they get double the frame rate. They're like, oh my God, dude, this, this new graphics card is incredible. It's like a short term thing because it's a good technology to have in the future, but we want our cars to be physically faster with raw performance instead of these technologies that try to fake it until they make it. I do have some hope for the future, especially with RDNA 4. RDNA 3 seems like it's having some problems with the chiplet architecture. Um, it's some growing pains there, uh, dri some driver issues at launch. And I think that they, they had their eyes set and why they marketed their cards more aggressively. I think they had their eyes set on more performance and they weren't able to achieve those goals within the month that they announced their card in the uh, and in December when they released it. I have more confidence in the next generation that RDNA 4 is going to be really cool. I'm not sure about Nvidia. I don't know where they're gonna take their next generation of cards. So what do you guys think about the upcoming generations? And do you think this kind of manufacturing and technology with these chips is sustainable into the future? I also wanted to mention though, um, I did not, I woke up this morning, okay? And this is, this is my channel page. Just thank you guys for all the support. I posted this video and I had scheduled to, to release at 6 a.m. this morning. So this is Sunday. I really didn't think genuinely that it was gonna do well at all. I thought it was gonna be kind of a flop. Today, I might hit 800 subscribers because I went to bed and I was at 799. And I was like, I'm hoping I can get that screenshot on my phone and save that milestone. I woke up and I was already past it. And throughout the day, I've gone up 400 subscribers. I was really hoping to respond to comments on this, um, but this video has 850 comments. Dude, I don't know what it feels like to have 850 comments. I'd usually wake up maybe throughout the day, check comments and respond to people and get a conversation going. But then I get a video that has 850 comments. I'm like, I can't do that, I'm sorry. It's a good problem to have. So again, just, just thank you for the support and I hope you guys stick around. It's been fun and keep making videos like this. That, that's all I got though. Peace.